Welcome to the good, the bad, and the sequel with your hosts, Doug and Jamie. Man, I love that theme song. This is the movie podcast where we're talking sequels, and we do it in two parts. The first, a discussion of the sequel, what they got right, what they got wrong, and how it could have been better. Second, an interview with an actor or someone that was involved in the film that made it worth watching. That episode comes out next week. But before we dive into this week's movie, I have to introduce you to my co-pilot on the sequel watching adventure, Jamie. Jamie, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, Doug? Pretty good, pretty good. And uh, God, this is a real piece of shit that uh, <laughs> we chose to be their first movie. But it's like the movie that you would think all these other podcasts would cover, but it's it's just not been done yet. Yeah, you know, this, there's a reason why I never watched this movie. And, you know, I always thought it was going to be bad, but after watching it, it's worse than I imagined. Oh, I know. And I want you to be honest with me. When we're breaking down the movie in a few minutes, what I want you to do is tell me, be honest, when you wanted to turn it off. But obviously you didn't want to because you didn't want to leave me hanging because, you know, it could be 10 minutes in and then it's just me talking about everything. Yeah, you know, I, I've told you so many times, I've only thrown off about four movies. Three of them might be in the Fast and the Furious franchise. This would have been one of them. Without okay. Doubt, you know, but I will let you know. All right, great. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of them over the next, uh, <laughs> over all these episodes that we're going to do, that, there, <laughs> that there's going to be a lot. That That's our goal is to make sure it's a movie that you want to throw off. But maybe you'll find some uh, silver lining. You actually enjoy some of these movies. Before we dive into the movies, I want to just break down, obviously, the difference between the original and the sequel. And honestly, I, I don't know if I would really call this a sequel. It is on paper, but it just it's so much of a gap. And you know, it's funny. I actually wrote that down. One of the things I wrote down was, uh, what does this have to do with the first movie? Because it really, it's not a sequel. I mean, it's, you know, and, and not, not to go too far in there, but the fact that they even had the nerve to try to find a very similar dog. That it's a different. I, at first, I thought it was the same dog from the first movie, but it's not. That would have been respectable if they at least had somebody from the first movie. And when you think it's called Son of the Mask, you know, we don't want to dive too much into it. Yeah. But let me just break down like little things about the movie. Okay. There's an 11 year difference yep. between the two movies. And obviously, the first one was an insanely successful film. Uh, you had Jim Carrey at the height of his fame. That was the year that he had three movies just do bonkers in the box office. Yep. He made so much money. Now that movie, what do you think the original budget for the first film was? Um, I would say that's probably Jim Carrey's first, second movie. He still wasn't that big, big guy yet. Um, Cameron Diaz was a nobody. Like, I think that was the first movie. She never looked any better. Um, that's true. But, uh, I would say 12 million. All right. Well, it was 23 million was the original budget. Okay. All right. And just think of when you look back at that movie, there's some pretty good graphics in that movie. You know, that same right around the same time Jurassic Park came out. It was like that first time like you watch these movies and you're like, you know what? It's not actually you know, cartoon animation. It was actually like good 3D effects. All right. So that movie, what do you think that movie made in the box office? Uh, well, I do know that Jim Carrey, uh, cause I was a huge fan of his in the, in the, in the past and I know his like first, like five movies made over a hundred million dollars. So I'm going to say one twenty-five. Low ball and Jim Carrey, $351 million. <laughs> all right. So just think of, all right, now we're going 11 years into the future. Okay. Not even just, obviously we know just the premise of our podcast. This yep. movie wasn't successful at all. But just think of the budget. Like watching that movie, you got to think who's in it. Like Jamie Kennedy. I I don't know if it, does he have a height of his fame. Uh, <laughs> look who's in it. Yeah, you know, really breaking down the cast. There's not anybody that's like monsterly huge at that point. And, what do you think the budget? What was that? Well, I was gonna say you know, you know, you, and then you have people like Stephen Wright, which I can't. <laughs> oh, remember. I know. Right. Okay. So they had him in there, but they didn't even use his comedy. Like his flavor of comedy is the one-liners, the zingers. And they didn't even use that. Like, they didn't even – they used them as an actor. Like, you know, and it didn't fit. Um, but budget-wise, I would say for this movie, uh, because I think the special effects 10 years earlier were 100 times better than what we saw here, um, $25 million. All right. Well, you're going to – I hope you're sitting down. Uh, it's anywhere. They don't have the actual – for a lot of these bomb movies, they don't report, like, the real numbers when it comes to that, which is kind of freaky, but – it's anywhere between eighty-four and a hundred million dollars to make this movie. 
you know, I, I think I think I mixed it up a little bit. I think how much did it gross? It was probably it was probably closer to you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A uh, hundred. That's crazy. Because yeah. No one. No one. No one in the movie got a big salary. I, mean, I can't imagine Jamie Kennedy commanding, you know, uh, more than two million dollars, if that. You know. Um, oh, I know. It's it's mind blowing, and uh, maybe all that, and then in the box office, it made sixty million. So maybe that budget went all into those replica masks that uh, they had throughout <laughs> the film. All right, so let's just dive right in. So okay, right right off the bat, this movie. <laughs> It opens up. It's so funny. These crappy movies, they always open up with, you know, you have a terrible like logo for like the, the movie yep. company. It opens up with some company logo. I think it said Pathy. And then it projects <laughs> a shadow of a rooster foreshadowing us getting fucked for 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, do you know that Jim Carrey was actually offered the role uh, for this? And at the time, he didn't want to do sequels. Wow. You know? Is this in 2005 or earlier they tried to give it to him? That I don't know. But I, I'm going to say 2005 only because the movie Jim Carrey made in 2005 was uh, fun with Dick and Jane. Oh, okay. And that was, to me, like, you know, it had its funny moments, but I think that was the start of Jim Carrey's down, like, you know, his career going down. So it would make sense for them to say, hey, listen, you know what? You're not back on top again. Let's throw, like, a sequel at you. At you. You know, and I think at the time he still wasn't ready. Oh, totally. And we can and we can go when we try to fix this movie and how they could have yeah. done it right. Yeah. Uh, I have some definitely views on how he could have might have been used. So okay. then, so then obviously the movie we start back and we're back in Edge City, right? That's the original where he originally was. Correct. And so you really want to get an audience going. They're sitting in their seats. They have the popcorn. They have the soda. They just spent all their money. You know what really gets the women going and the guys focused? <laughs> ben Stein's voice <laughs> why would you start so right from the beginning you hear ben stein just talking and you have all these people just staring at him you have the really over racist guy <laughs> well you know again you you want to ask when i was close to throwing it off oh my god i think i think the second i saw ben stein who you know you know this movie hit so this movie seems to do things where they try to feed off other movies and this doesn't work. So Ben Stein was funny in first Bueller. No one knew who he was. You know, he's a little stick of, you know, being that annoying teacher who's, you know, the low, uh, slow drawl. You know, it was funny. Not 20 years later, it's still not, it's not funny anymore. You know, so that whole, you know, throwing him in that role did not fit. Um, and I was ready to throw it off. Because, again, Ben Stein, I'm not a fan of his. And I think he's stupid. Um, I'm like, if it's going to start off with, like, your big cameo, Ben Stein... Uh, it's, I can't imagine where it's going to go from here. I know. They could have started so much better with that. So um, then we go in, and I want to correct myself. I should have been looking at my notes. The redneck, he wasn't racist. He was homophobic. He he, <laughs> he was calling calling people fruitcakes? Yes. I, I, I don't understand. But yeah, <laughs> so then the next thing that is mind-blowing, and I don't remember this from the first, time, first movie, but then, we, then Loki shows up, Alan Cumming, and – is that like a back? Is this like a prequel to Thor? <laughs> so, well, well, the mask was supposed to be of of, the guy, of Loki. Was Ben Stein in the first one? Was he the, the owner of? Wasn't there an owner of the mask shop in the first one? I don't remember a mask shop in the beginning one. Yes, there was. So, because Jim Carrey brings the mask to a, a shop, and I, I I don't remember, but I want to say it might have been Ben Stein. Oh, really? Um, but I could be wrong. Um, but. It was, it, it was, the mask was talked about, the, you know, Loki. It's uh, like a, the Loki's mask or a curse. So his name was brought up in the first one, but he was never brought up here. What I didn't understand is why did he look like a drag queen at the, the museum? Like the way he was dressed and he had this makeup, he looked like a drag queen. I know, he, it made no sense. He wasn't no in, I don't know if he was in the original mask. I'm trying to look it up. Who, Ben Stein? Yeah. If he wasn't, then it was someone else. Um, it was a, definitely his shop He because he brought the mask to the shop. I remember that. So he might not have been there, but there was definitely some kind of history with the mask that was brought to him. Yeah, and then the next part, he's dressed like a woman, and yeah, then, yeah. then he and then he grabs the mask that's into the display case. <laughs> he turns it over and says, made in Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next scene, he's ripping off Ben Stein's face, and then he's still actually talking. Yeah, yeah that, they, they really dragged that Ben Stein. Uh, you oh, know. you are right. He was in the original. Ben Stein was, right? All right. And he worked at the shop, I think. I, I bet you he was the shopkeeper. Great. They, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so now so now he's leading a, a, a tour in a museum. That's great that he, uh, <laughs> that he, that at least they got somebody from the original to so, be in this. 
so of all the people from the original movie, they grab Ben Stein. I know. I, I would. I would have loved the buddy, the friend from the original mask. He exactly. would have been great to have in this, right? Or the the cop from Animal House. Oh yeah, you know, like have him in there, you know. But Ben Stein, that's the one, you know. You know what? That just goes to show you that they probably all turned it down. Oh, I'm, and, I, and I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why the guy from Animal House. I don't think he's he's getting too much work, but no. I know that doesn't make any sense that that's the piece that they start the movie off with. Just the guy that was like a curator of the mask. Exactly. So, that, so then the next part, he has finger guns and he's shooting at <laughs> cops and the cops in edge city are wearing red uniforms. <laughs> what, where, where anywhere in the United States are there cops that don't wear blue? And what, is, what, what is the look of the town? Cause this is the same town as the first one, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this looks like a, like a Beetlejuice, Dr. Seuss kind of town. Like, it's colorful and, like, cartoony. Like, they, they really didn't even, like, they made it, like, cartoony from the beginning. Like, I, I didn't understand what kind of town this was. I know, they made it, like, super silly. At least, in, at least in the original, when he did things to other people, it wasn't, like, silly, like, hey, let's rip their face off, or it, it actually... It made it actually made sense, like in the universe, like with the, but just with this when he started shooting like the finger guns, <laughs> and then it just made no sense. And then I don't know where. Then there's like the the mask was like floating down a stream, so we don't even know where the mask. Did they show where the mask well, came from, or is well, that just floating from the last movie? Well, it was. In, don't I, I think it didn't it end over the bridge? Yeah, and his okay, and his friend jumped in there to get the mask. Yeah, yeah. So to me, first of all, that would have made sense to like lead with something like that. Oh, like, that would have been awesome. Know. Um, but you're right. So right, then they didn't really explain how the mask got there, and the fact that the dog is the dog is the I want to say the same exact dog from the first one, but it's a different name. Yeah, like, and I try- and I would say that dog's probably dead by now, right? Yeah. It's eleven years later. <laughs> right. So, but why was it like the, the dog had the mask? Right. Isn't that yeah. how? Oh, totally. So, like, yeah. So that, that they didn't explain that either. Like that, like why you know that didn't make sense. They could have started it off more like that guy was like selling a uh, you know maybe Jamie Kennedy. We can dive in more at the end, but just right in the beginning, like just they could have done something so much better to start this movie. They could have had like uh, Jamie Kennedy's character like last minute going to his uh, work party, which he is, and he just needs the mask, so he stops into some like store and that guy, like, 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 yeah, like the, like the gremlin store. You totally. Know, like, like an old, like an old, like, right. And they find a mask. There. He goes, yeah, let me just grab it. Right. That's the, that would have been the best way. To, <laughs> all right. What was his costume? At the, since you already jumped to the party, what was his costume at the party before the mask? Oh was, my God. I don't remember what he was. He went, and I wrote it down. I'm trying to see. Um, he was, he was something, something that had nothing to do with the mask. Like he, like the, the mask that he grabbed did not fit the costume. And I, I can't remember what the costume was, uh, and I thought I wrote it down. God, I haven't written down. But before we dive into that, let's just break down okay. Tim, Jamie Kennedy's character, which, oh, my God. <laughs> right off the bat, he, he, he's not an adult, and his fear is, you know, having babies. When his brother-in-law asks about having a kid, like, hey, when are you guys having a kid? And his brother-in-law is like the total douche. He's wearing a bowling short, shirt in, like, the middle of the day, and then he has a nightmare about having a ton of vampire babies. How disturbing do those babies look? Oh my god, like, it's, it's just insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if, I mean, first of all, has Jamie Kennedy made any movie outside of uh, the Scream movies? Uh, no, he made the Malibu's most. Oh, Malibu. Okay, that's right. Okay, so you know, I don't know how. Like, of all, you're going to tell me there was no one else around <laughs> that they could have picked but Jamie Kennedy? Oh, I you know. know. Like, you know, so. Uh, yeah, you know he's he's such he's an immature guy uh, in the movie. He's a bad father, which we'll get to. Um, a terrible father. Um, he's not even a good husband. Like I mean, like I don't understand. Like she's way too hot. To oh him. my god, Trailer Howard. We I just got finished binge watching Monk, and then she was on two girl, uh, two guys, a girl on a pizza yep. place. She was on in Dirty Work. She's yeah. not in a lot of stuff, like which is shocking that she's in this. Like I think a year later she uh, joined Monk, but. God, she is so. He must have 
you know, in the universe, he must have like the biggest penis. It's That's, it's it's unbelievable. He's got he's following the same thing as Pete Davidson. Yes, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why she would want to have a kid with him. He's already showing that he has no. He, he's not responsible. Uh, he doesn't want to have kids. So why that, that doesn't help a relationship? She needs to understand this. Well, he. What does he work for? Like a toy company is or advertising for toys? Or yeah. Like- so he works on like the lower level. The whole company is like kind of like a, I don't know, like a ghetto Pixar, or right. ghetto Disney. So, so he's you- like trash. Right. He does nothing. Right. And, but a lot of times when he's in these movies, you see these, these guys that work for a company like that. You have to be immature. You have to be nerdy. You have to be, you know, a geek to play with your toys and do like, you know, to, to be around that environment. So I think his personality fits that. But it doesn't fit his life. Like, you know, his wife who wants kids, who wants a family, he doesn't seem the type. Oh, totally. He seems like a guy that would have, like, he'd be, like, live. he would be, like, living in, like, the Stanley Ippius type part where (laughs) be by himself. Like, that's what I think of. And the thing that's crazy is their dog has its own bedroom with its own bone wallpaper. Yeah, that was bizarre. That was really bizarre. I mean, and, and it was a huge bedroom. It wasn't like, you know, like a doghouse. It was like you know, insanity, like a child, like a, like that's their child. Yeah. So here, right now, I'm going to play a clip to show like an amazing cameo by a guy that I would consider a pretty great actor. He's done really great films. And then towards the end, he did a lot of crap films. So I'm going to play that now. Loki! You wake the baby. Oh, sorry. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins is actually in this movie. That is amazing. And I, I didn't realize it at first. And then I ha- the second time I saw him, I'm like, Boy, I know that guy's voice. I haven't seen him in a while. It, ridiculous. Like this this role, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I can't believe he was in this movie. And then that's even crazy. At first, when I saw him, when he pops up in the sky and he's talking to Loki and telling him, like, you have to find the mask. You shouldn't have made the mask. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? Bob Hoskins needed the money. He's in it for a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. He's in this movie a lot. Like he pops up every so often and he pops up in other people too. So we'll get to that. And then, so then he's, and then we show uh, Jamie Kennedy and then he's dressed as torpedo tortoise. That's the, one of the cartoon characters that this company is making. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that, 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 that looks like it would drag a lot of uh, attention to whatever they're looking for. Uh, it looks so stupid. Like, I mean, just as an advertisement, it reminded me. Do you watch Friends? It reminded yeah. me of when 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 the Aardvark. the Aardvark. Yeah, that's exactly what around. I'm like, come on, this, it's so they can't even get a good costume for an advertisement for this movie. Like, like it, everything was silly. Everything was cartoony. Everything was just just nonsense. I, I I don't even know if there's a script. Like, I don't know if there was a lot of ad living in this movie. It was just, you know, I, I'm going to go back to the eighty or hundred million dollars you said this movie cost. Where? Where? Oh, I know. I still don't get it. And you know, I mean. You know, we haven't even got to him turning into the mask yet, which, you know, all right, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll wait till you get there. Go ahead. Yeah. And then and the next thing is Cal Penn is in this. I know he wasn't in like a lot before this, but he, he was in a lot. Of, I, oh, I know. And he and he put himself in this he, for, forever. Like even like just before this came out, he did Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And that yep. is like a monster movie. Like, why would why would he? And this is the follow up film for him. So yep. he does this big movie, and then he's like his low-level buddy. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, it really doesn't. It's it's. It, it, I'm, I'm telling you, I think like you know they asked so many people, you know, offered money. No one wanted to be in it, so they said, "Hey, you know, here's here's some money. Come to do this movie. It's a quick scene, or you know, and they, and they do it. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, and he wasn't in a few scenes, but yeah, I mean, like I think the cameos don't fit either. Like as the friend, like he doesn't he doesn't fit. He does he doesn't go. I mean. uh I don't know. I have a hard time understanding the people they had to play the roles they had. Oh, totally. And then I got to think, like, does Disney or Pixar, do they make its animators that, like, want to be animators dressed like Goofy for six months <laughs> before they get the job? Because that's the whole thing he was telling, you know, uh, his wife, Cheryl Howard, in the beginning of the movie. Like, hey, in order to get this job, you know, I got to put in my dues. Like, that, that's what you have to do. Maybe this isn't a career for you. Yeah, and, and you know what? And, and that's pro- then that's how they show it in the movies. And then you have the boss who has no personality whatsoever working for this company that you know that that, that as a child. Like, look at Jamie uh, Kennedy's personality. Look at the, the the costume he has to wear, and everything's all silly. And like, and then you have the boss who has no personality. Stephen Wright is an amazing comedian. He's he really funny in so many movies, but 
He is if you if Eeyore was a person, <laughs> that's what he is. He's just so and that's his humor and it works for him. But in this role, you have a main guy that's like the face of a company. That's not the face you want for your company. No, and that's not a personality you want. That's what I mean. Like it's not a personality you want for what they're trying to get a, get across. Like so how does someone, you know, that looks like he has no fun in his life promote fun? I know. It's 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 very depressing. And now we're gonna get into it. Okay. So he's getting ready for the ha- Halloween party. He's like, hey, where's the mask? The, you know, the one that the dog dragged in from the stream, the lake. So then he, the whole time, all the while, he's calling this mask lame that he doesn't want to bring it. So he actually brings in the car. Who is this guy to call anybody lame? And he has a Roadrunner sticker on the side of his car. <laughs> so he drives around with a Roadrunner sticker. He doesn't even have kids yet, so there's no excuse for that. Well, I, I do think the, the Roadrunner comes in in later in, in play. And I'll go, well, once we get to that point, I'll, I'll go over it. So I think there's a kind of a foreshadowing all right good there you go yeah, so um uh yeah and, and i wish i remembered the costume that he wore because the i remember seeing like the mask that he decided oh i can't wear the mask i wanted to wear so let me wear this instead it had nothing to do with the costume so um but yeah okay so he grabs the, uh, the mask and you know are we gonna get into him putting it on yet or no oh, totally and this okay. is the part I, I wrote down holy shit his accent is horrible buckle up baby and well, this is where I would have turned it off. It's 17 minutes and 31 seconds. I would have turned it off. I, I, you know, listen, you know, and I said it in the beginning with Ben Stein. I said, yeah, I would have turned it off. I wouldn't have turned it off that soon. I would have given it a little time. When I saw what he looked like as the mask, he looked animatronic. Oh, my like, God. He, he didn't, he, his face didn't move. His voice. I mean, now this is a movie that came out, what, you said 10 years 2005, later? yeah. Okay. So 10 years later, when the, 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 the special effects of 2005 were 100 times better. Forget Jim Carrey as the mask. Just the mask itself, it looks so much better. This looks so ridiculous. It looked like animatronic. It looked like robotic. It and, it, and his head just looks so much bigger. Like Jim Carrey's, it just looked like it was covered in his face. This looked like it added like 10 pounds to him. <laughs> it just and the made voice. no sense. Oh, my the, dude. The accent was horrible. I don't know what he was going for or what kind of – I don't have no idea. I, I, I wrote that down. It's the voice of the mask, and it looks like animatronic. Plastic chin. Like it, like the whole thing, I, I wrote exactly the same thing. It was just horrible. Like I, It didn't make sense. And then here's the thing that blows my mind, especially when we talked about the budget and how expensive the budget was. <laughs> you would think like, oh, man, this movie has a big budget. Oh, does it have a big star? No. Okay, you know what? Maybe they spent it on the graphics. No, obviously. And then you're thinking, oh, maybe they had like the best soundtrack ever. No, not at all. The <laughs> songs that they picked were from like 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and a then, remix of it, and he's like rapping to it. What is happening? Well, <laughs> so I wrote down 10 minute musical number that went on way too long. That oh musical, my god, are we even there yet? Because I mean, I, I I told you my notes. Oh no, no we're there. Place. Okay, we're there. That musical no- number I think was filler. Like they're like, all right, we really don't have a script here. We don't know where we're going with this movie. Let's throw in a 10-minute musical number as the mask. Like, you look at the first one when he did uh, Q and Pete. Oh, that I love great. that. Oh, that yeah. was great. And it was as long as the song was. It wasn't, it, like, added on. Exactly. And, and, and it fit. And, and he, like you said, like, the things he did went with the scenes. Like, you know, his whole point was to distract the cops. And that's and it worked. So he yeah. was able to distract your cup. Here, there was no point. There was no point to do a musical number. It wasn't any. Like, it just didn't go, and it was horrible. You might think I'm crazy, but I while we're doing this, I I checked what he was. He was a, the dumb costume. He couldn't find his werewolf mask, so he was a werewolf with an axe in its back. <laughs> which I, what what is that? I don't really understand what that is. Uh, he, you know what? They couldn't even come up with something good for that. So here's here's my note. I, I actually found that as you're saying that. So I said, so the mask goes with a werewolf victim. That's, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what, what he was, that. a werewolf victim. So he's a werewolf victim, but that mask went with it. <laughs> yeah. And again, if he's a victim of a werewolf, okay, with the, werewolves, they're not going to use weapons. They're usually going to eat someone and slice them all up. I don't remember in like werewolf in London or werewolf in Paris. I don't remember the werewolf grabbing the weapons and using it on them. So why would he have an axe in his back unless he fell on it? It makes no it just makes no sense. Yeah. And, then we, and then we get through the horrible the mu- uh, music scene, and I'm going to play a clip for that right now. This is 
the part where you book it. This is the part where you dance. I just can't get over that they thought whoever edited that movie, the director, the writer, Jamie Kennedy, like they let that get into the final movie. The whole 10 minutes of it. I, I mean, how, how long? I mean, it really, I, I want to say it was cl- had to be a good 10 minutes. Uh, if not, I mean, like close to 10 minutes of, of that singing part. It, 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 it went out forever. I'd be curious to see how long that part was because it was long. <laughs> it felt like it felt very long. Yeah, and it was just, and then Stephen Wright's obsessed with him being the green guy. Like, he's just like, who's that green guy? And then I, that's the whole rest of the movie. Like, he's obsessed with this freaky looking creature. And, and, and what did he do to become obsessed with it? He sang the song. Like, I think, like, he didn't do anything, like, as the green guy that, that would say, you know what, this is a guy I need for my company. This is the guy, I, is the face of our, 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 you know, advertisement. What did he do that made him so excited? He had a green face. I, I, I know it doesn't make any sense. That's, why would he? Why would he just go head over heels over that? All right. So then we get to the next part. Yep. Mister Tim Jamie Kennedy. He didn't want to have kids at all, but in the mask, he wants to have kids. So he gets <laughs> home. He jumps on top of her. It seems like it's super quick. And then this is the most mind blowing thing that makes no sense in any movie I've ever seen in my life. I've seen some really bad movies. <laughs> so if he has sex with the mask on, somehow three of his sperm become the masks <laughs> like not all of them it's not like all of them then i'd be like okay that makes sense but only three of them and, and wasn't it like a race oh like it was a, yeah th- 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 yeah like i i mean and and you know it, it kind of brought back a flashback a little bit of look who's talking you know, oh totally little, yeah you know but this became like a dis- definitely a disturbing disturbing scene like it, it really was and like you said three of them and they were racing it was like a race so who's gonna get there first yeah, it, it, it was bizarre, and it definitely was quick, but... <laughs> it was magical. <laughs> and then right away, she's pregnant. He's complete... He doesn't know what to say, Okay, because it happens so fast. All right, so this is what I wrote. This. So this, to me, this this made it very mind-blown blown myself. So she tells him, I'm pregnant, and he's, you know, like, dumbfounded because he doesn't understand, because in his mind, he didn't have sex with her. Yeah, yeah. But he goes along with it. Like, I know. He's not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not questioning, like, you know, like, all right, I, I wasn't with you, so how are you pregnant? Like, he was like, okay. Like, yeah. like, like that, that yeah. made no sense to me. He, he didn't, yeah, he doesn't remember anything from that day. Like, even when people are like, oh, man, that costume you had that day. And then he's like, oh, I kind of remember putting that green mask on. Like, you know, Stephen Wright's obsessed with him, like, finding that green mask, and he, like, can't find it because he doesn't really remember what even happened. Yeah, but so, that, that so was why in the first one too. It? Yeah, that was in the first one too. So that was oh, okay. you know the, in the first one he lost his memory every time. Like he didn't know he robbed the bank. He didn't know like you know until he opened the door and all the money came out of the yeah closet. yeah. So you know and so I, I I'm on board for that. I'm on board that he didn't remember or didn't know, but he he does you know he doesn't, he doesn't seem like a drinker or anything. He, so he wouldn't have passed out. So the fact that he's not questioning. How his wife got pregnant without him is blowing my mind. I, I know, I know. At least you know Jim Carrey, like, when uh, Jim, Jim like, <laughs> oh yeah, when Jim Carrey opened the closet, and he saw the money. He kind of like put two and two together. Right. But with him, he's just like, oh okay, you're pregnant. <laughs> then they go to the doctors. The doctor <laughs> confirms it. And then the crazy thing is, is I thought just by the way everything was moving so quickly. Like she started like vomiting bubbles and she was eating silly string. Like he, he didn't question any oh, of yeah. this. Yeah. Like, like, like that's totally normal. Like, yeah. like you know, if, you, if you're going to have morning sickness, you know, bubbles is the, is the way to go. Yeah. And then the next part, I, I just thought, I really thought it was going to be like a miraculous, like she had the kid in like three months, just the way everything was moving so fast. And it, it was just made no sense. And then, and then we, let's, then the baby, Dancing in the ultrasound, like uh, there was just so many crazy things that happened with the baby. Yeah, but here I want to jump ahead a little bit. So, okay. so when Loki goes to he goes to the like some shop that has like a bunch of old artifacts. All right, so when he's in that shop, I don't know if you remember that guy, uh, Jerry Miner. He was in a bunch of stuff. He was in Lucky Louie. Yeah. Um, he was in the Artie Lang softball movie. Yeah. So he has a, he's pretty funny. He's never the star, but he always has really good roles. Yeah. And then Bob Hoskins back again. He's like <laughs> inside of his body. So it's like watching drunk history. And he's like <laughs> jumping around like crazy, telling him he has to find the mask. And somehow uh, Bob Hoskins knows that there's a baby 
from the mask? <laughs> I, you know, you know. I mean, back to the mask though. Why did they want the mask so bad? Like, did they did they ever explain it? Did they ever explain what's the purpose of the mask? Because obviously Loki has powers without the mask. Bob Hopkins has powers without the mask. What's the purpose of the mask? I, I that's what I understand. It was like Loki. I forgot what his name is. He's like the jokester god or something. Who, so Loki? yeah, that's like his like god title. Like he's right. like. Mischief. So he's like, God the, yeah, God of Mischief. Yeah. So there's like the joke that he played, which who's the joke on? Did did he get off on like watching people like Jim Carrey, like have to you know, do things with it? So, yeah, that made no sense. Like why they were like scrambling, like, oh, my God, we have to find it now. And 11 years later, like, yeah, were, were yeah. they looking the last 11 years? It <laughs> seems like it was at the end of the rope that they, OK, you know, we got to find it now. And, and, and you're talking about these are gods who could take a face of Ben Stein and put it in a glass yes. case, but they can't find uh, a mask. Oh, I know. Uh, and it's essentially, just, yeah, and it's you're just, right. And how did he know there's a baby? I, I, yeah, it's like he had some time in the detector that the mask like created a baby. Like there's mass sperm that's you know in the <laughs> works. But and then when the baby's born, like the animation for the baby is oh, oh my god, it is so bad. And you got to think. <laughs> Yo, Ali McBeal, the Ali McBeal baby I, came out in like the late 90s. And yeah. I'm telling you, it's like not that far behind the baby in this movie. I thought of that right away. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, even when they had the toddler, I don't know if there was ever a real toddler. Like at points, I'm like, all right, is that a real baby? And then it does something <laughs> ridiculous. I'm like, nope, more than a real baby. Like, like it, I, I couldn't figure out, you know, yeah, it was it was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And then once it's a toddler and they're you're waking up to feed the baby because Tim's this is where it starts to be like where child services should have been oh, called on. Yeah. He, he like doesn't know that he's, he puts the bottle down and then he accidentally feeds his baby a nightlight. Oh, uh, not only a nightlight, oh, a, lamp. Broken, a broken lamp. <laughs> so it had, had glass all at the start all over the place. So it wasn't Jeez. just a nightlight. It was a broken <laughs> and, Like insane. And the kid, and the baby is what? A year, a year old, maybe. Like I don't. How old's the baby? Two years, and he's like telling the baby to go away. Like he's like ignoring <laughs> the kid. Like he's a terrible, terrible father. Oh no, I know, terrible. <laughs> absolutely terrible. And then, uh, so when he comes, when it comes to the baby, the one thing she says not to do when she goes away is to don't put the baby in front of the TV. And this guy puts <laughs> the baby in front of the TV, and not just like does it because he wants to get his work done. He's like, we cut to a scene. He's sleeping upstairs. Yeah, and but don't forget, before he did that, he kept punching the desk and slamming every time the baby was crying. You know, that he was so annoyed and mad at this baby that he just, you know, again, just he wanted to sleep. Yeah, it was crazy. And then we have Loki. Loki is, you know, because Bob Hoskin wants that mask back so bad. And Loki's doing whatever he can. He go, He starts, he finds a list of babies that were born in the hospital at that time. So cause somehow they know that it's then. Oh, cause yeah, he goes into that. Oh my God. When Alan Cumming like morphs into that woman, takes her seat <laughs> at the desk. And then when she comes back and she's like, who are you? Yeah. He's like you. And then she falls on the ground. <laughs> it was insane. But he prints out a list and then he goes all through the order. So he's going to find everyone. And, and what makes no sense to me is their last name is Avery. So it's A. So it, it seems like he would be the first one that they go to. Yeah, right. It, no, it's the last one. Yeah, it's, it's so <laughs> stupid. But no, so he pretends to be a vacuum salesman. Yes? Good afternoon. And this is where we go back into like the universe of like actually being real. Like Ben Stein's face gets ripped off. Somehow he's still talking when obviously he'd be dead and there'd be blood right. behind it. So this, he sucks a woman up in a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow she's just okay. Shouldn't there be something on the news like, "Hey, this people are dying mysteriously"? Because he does it multiple times with different like things he's selling. And again, you're a god. Your your best way of death is a vacuum. Yeah, like, it's... I, like I mean, like I mean, like why, like why even bother? Like you know, like it just and he had he had to disguise himself in so many different disguises. He's a god. Like why did like I mean, like he has this again. We'll go back to Ben Stein. You could take someone's face. And throw it in there, keep talking. You could suck a woman up in a vacuum, but you still have to use disguises to get where you, where you need to go. Yeah, or you have to print out a thing on the computer. Shouldn't you be able to, like, <laughs> to just like think of the computer and get all the files like in your head? And yeah. he, and, and then and it goes back to God of Mischief. He's just like a he's just as irresponsible as Tim is. So like Odin, I get Odin's gripe because he's telling his son to do something as a certain amount of time. 
And look what happens. He is like fooling around, like wanting to put all these different costumes on. Couldn't even just knock on the door, snapped his fingers. The woman like freezes <laughs> and then he checks to see if it's the baby. And then exactly. leaves. it doesn't make any sense. And then here's the most mind blowing part of the movie to me. When the dog puts the mask on. <laughs> all right. And he says the catchphrase from the original film. Yep. <laughs> it was like mind blowing. And and you know, well, we went we went past something I wanted to mention, but oh yeah, but about the dog though. See now, and this this is my point. The dog in the first one, when he puts that mask on, made the whole movie. Like it, it, it was like no one expected that. Oh it yeah, was funny. Like it wasn't you know like they dragged that dog with oh. that mask so long. Again, it's it, it's funny in the way it happened. The first one dragging it didn't work here, and we'll we'll get to the dog, but what. When you talked about putting the, the, the kid in front of the TV, do you remember what the kid was watching? Now, this this movie was made in 2005, right? Yeah. Okay, do you remember what was on the TV? So was it like really old cartoons? It was Woody Woodpecker and Transformers. Uh, yes. <laughs> cartoons. So yes. 2005, that's what the kid's watching on TV is Woody Woodpecker. And again, with the budget that they had, I'm sure they could have like <laughs> licensed some really good films. But I mean, I mean, but that, that was, I'm looking at him like, why is the kid watching old cartoons? <laughs> You know, I mean, just you know, I had to go back to that. So that that didn't make sense either. Oh, it was yeah. totally ridiculous. And then so, with the dog, the thing that's crazy about the dog when he gets the mask is what's what's insane is his whole thing. His mindset is like, I have to kill this baby. I have to yes. murder this baby. And this is where the Woody. Uh, this is where the Roadrunner comes in. So I think that whole sequence between the baby and the dog was the roadrunner in the car. Oh, that's good. You know, and that that dog was the coyote 100%. He had all these different schemes and like gadgets that never worked and the baby was able to you know, make sure that the baby was safe and always backfired on the dog. Every especially that last one that dragged him through the whole house. Yeah, like, yeah. The, like that was such a roadrunner coyote move. That that's I think where again that's I saw the Roadrunner in that whole scene you know that whole scenario. That's good. You were paying attention a little more than I was. <laughs> and then going back to the old things that I was watching, and again we talked about the soundtrack, like the old songs that they use in this. Yep. So the big scene in the movie, the baby first time the baby like actual like we saw those few times that the baby was like doing crazy stuff, and then Tim would like blink, and out of the corner of his eye, the baby would be normal again. But the first time that the baby, he's on the phone with his wife. She's like working for, she has a really good job. She's working for a good company. She's in New York and she calls home to him. And while they're on the phone, this baby starts doing the Michigan J Frog. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. <laughs> <laughs> he's singing I, I, the Michigan rag and I love you, baby. Or the soundtrack for this movie. I, again, back to Bugs Bunny, and it, and and that's don't forget the frog. You know, the, the, that all came from Bugs Bunny. Yeah. A, so this they had whoever I don't know whoever the maybe Mel Blanks was the one of the writers for this. You know, it was a lot of Bugs Bunny throwback in this movie. And uh, I had to show my daughter the frog because she never seen the frog dance like the whole cartoon. Oh yeah, yeah. The guy goes to prison and it, the, the frog won't stop singing. They did the same exact thing in this movie, and like again, out of the blue, like it wasn't needed. <laughs> it was like it was so stupid. It was like, all right, let's just throw something else in here. Let's just throw this in there, and like, it, it made no sense. <laughs> that's, that's I can be honest with you. This guy, this was like his only uh, movie that he wrote, really like big movie. Other than that, he wrote for the big hit, the Chevy Chase Show, <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote for Politically Incorrect. He wrote for Cat Dog. He wrote for like a lot of silly things. So. Wait, I the don't... big hit. What was the big hit? Was that the one with Mark Wahlberg? Oh, no, he didn't write that. I mean, like, he just took pretty much, like, that's the only big hit he had. I mean, oh. like, the the politically incorrect, and he was only there for a year. But, like, other than that, he didn't write, like, so I get why he wanted to do this. It's like his big opportunity, but it was yeah. really bad. No, it, again, you know, that frog scene, you know, the singing of the baby, it just had no place. There was no place for, and, and you know what it is? Honestly, I think it's, again, it's, it's filler. It, that whole scene lasted. Oh, totally. Minutes, yeah. You know, um, and he was able to drag that out. So, because they re- there really is not a storyline to this movie. There's no storyline. Loki wants the mask. That's it. The, the guy doesn't want a baby. So, like, it didn't match. 
So they're like, all right, let's get these big like numbers, these scenes that will drag and make the movie longer. How how long was the movie? Do you know? It was. This is even crazier. So the movie was ninety six minutes total, but it ends at ninety. So there's six <laughs> minutes of credits, and it's like, what what were they what were they trying to do? So yeah, you're right. If they took out those ten minute clips here and there, yeah, like, this movie could be like a solid like forty five minutes long. Oh, easily, easily. Like it doesn't make any sense. But the one thing is that, like, when the baby was doing all that crazy stuff and, you know, hitting uh, Jamie Kennedy and causing him pain. And, <laughs> dude, I was I was secretly hoping, like, he would die. And then <laughs> the rest of the movie was just, like, the baby and the mom. But obviously that didn't happen. But how about when the when he was changing the baby? Okay. So, I, I you know, and I, and I wrote down, and I, I don't know why I wrote it down, but I wrote down peeing. So am I, am I like... Just remind me because there was, must have been something with peeing that stood out. So in so many movies, they have that trope like the person's changing like a baby boy and they pee on him. Right. So in this part, the pee starts coming out one stream. Oh and yeah. Then the, oh, yeah. And then it just starts coming out in three <laughs> streams. So are we to say like like the baby, baby of the mass has three penises? Like I, I have no idea. He had three sperms, right? Three. So maybe, oh. So maybe they each have their own. Maybe that's how that works. I don't know. We have you know, to get a doctor on the show. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring, <laughs> they can be the specialist next time. But, you know, and then you have, and we're going back a little bit, but so you had the mom leaving on a business trip, seeing how frantic oh and, my un, God. and how unprepared the father, her husband is. And she just couldn't get out of there any faster than I she know. was getting out of there. Like, if, if I'm leaving and my wife looks like, you know, like, like that, there's no way I'm going. You know, like, there's, no, there's no way she's going to handle. And who, it seemed like she was gone for like a long time. Oh, I know. I mean, it, it was a week. They said it was a week, but okay, a week. So there's no way that like, she saw his face that she's going to say, you know what, my my son is in good hands right now. I know. <laughs> what? Well, she knew what she was getting into when she you know married him and you know had sex with him when he came <laughs> home from a work party. So no, it's it's totally on her that she had to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, and then and then um, what do I have here? I wrote something else down here. Nosy neighbors. Oh my uh, god, that's my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> that was the only time I like genuinely laughed when Logie turned the neighbor into a nose. <laughs> oh, I have that written down. So just before that, to take one step back, is when Loki shows up to the house as like the ghetto UPS guy. I forgot yep. what company name it was, dude. If a UPS guy came into your house. And would you let him pick up your baby? First of all, what you, you what guy goes into your house in the first place? I know. Like, you I put the baggage outside. outside. <laughs> but no, it's absolutely not. No, nowhere near my baby. So yes, yeah, it was it was insane. So then the and then Jamie Kennedy gets like he opens up the box like a big fist comes out, knocks him into the air. He falls on. He breaks like the coffee table or the end table, and then Loki takes the baby. Yep. And then the next part is where I don't understand. See, like the world, this is where you got like got to figure out like who can see what. So like in, in the mask, the original movie, everybody saw Stanley Ipkiss as the mask. Like when he was going around, like you saw that when he went back to the mechanic shop, those guys saw him like tearing everything up. Why when Loki is on the street with Jamie Kennedy and the baby, can no one see the <laughs> axe? He's holding an axe with hands coming out of the axe, holding guns. I I wrote the same exact thing. I said not one person turns around and looks at them. It makes no sense. Maybe because it's like San Francisco, I would think like people. Maybe if that was New York, people would be like, you know what? It's none of our business, right? But, and, but nobody even like looks. It's like you, maybe they told the extras that day, hey, we're not doing a scene like that. And then afterwards, they're like, we're gonna add in axe with guns. <laughs> It made no like really like 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 that was so common to see walking down the street. It, it was, was it, yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it just made no sense. So then, uh, so like Loki has the kid, and then the next part is he figures out how he has to be able to figure this out. So then Tim has to go find his dog, and he's like, "Where could my dog be?" So I think this is when the wife shows up in the cab. Yes. Like, yeah. So she's like, he's telling her, like, all right, we got to find the kid, but we can't call the cops. So then he goes, oh, I know where the dog is. Then he walks up to his dog, and the dog's, like, in, like, a dog motel room looking thing. (laughs) And he cocks his dog from getting any. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. I think the relationship with the dog and Jamie Kennedy were a little weird. Yeah, you know? it, it made no sense. No, it didn't. And, and it, it, you saw his reaction with the dog at the beginning of the movie. Like he 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 played with the dog up close. He was he was like again. I think like the dog was his best friend. He didn't have any friends. He was you know he couldn't be a father. So uh, you know his his. I don't know his status with his dog at, at the end when he was you know when cockblocking the dog again didn't make sense. Like, yeah, I, it, like what was the point of that? Like I don't know. I don't know. No, I I I, I understand he had to get it, but it, like did the writer say like, hey, let's add in again? It's a son of a mask. There's a kid in the movie, a baby in the movie, and they think like, hey, let's add like dogs having sex as a scene <laughs> <laughs> in this movie. It just made no sense. So then the next the next part after he after he finds the dog. They go to the. They cut to the baby and Loki in the alleyway, and they're playing the most disgusting game of Twister <laughs> that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah, and then and why were they playing? I mean, like Loki already had the baby. Like you know, what I'm saying like I, at that point, is he's, is he's still waiting for the mask? Like I don't, I don't know, like. I was confused. I was totally confused on that part. Yeah, it was weird that part because he was like, he, he was like, that's when he was like, oh, I want this baby. Right. So like this is like he like I want this baby for me. But just so what did he like buy is that like a custom like in God world? Is that a custom game of Twister? I don't know. I played Twister before. I don't remember ear on red. <laughs> like that is never a thing that ha- that has ever happened. Yeah, I know. And 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 I, I was wondering like, did he did that having the baby, did that take the place of the mask? Like did he not care about the mask anymore? It kind of seemed that way because that's what the deal that he wanted to the, you know make with him. Right, yeah, and I, then I yeah, and then it just so then so then the next part is he's like, how can I be him? So then he puts the mask on. Jamie, uh, Jamie Kennedy puts the mask on, and oh my god! How, again, the first time he wore the mask, it was an hour. I remember looking at. I, I stopped the movie. It was an hour prior from the first time he put it on, <laughs> and that hour was so much better because he wasn't that. And God, he was absolutely as corny as it was in the beginning. And the car he was driving was just like, what is so, going it, Right. So, so the movie's called The Son of the Mask, right? And it's obviously about the baby. Jamie Kennedy's The Mask, beginning of the movie, end of the movie, and that's it. The dog yeah. had the mask more than anyone else. Oh, definitely. Movie, you know, and I, I have to be honest, I'm very close to done with my notes at this point. I'm like, I can't take it anymore. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know what to write about anymore. My last note said ransom quote. Did he say, give me back my son? Like from Mel Gibson. Oh yeah, 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 That's, yeah. That was my last note. I'm like, did they really just pull that? Like now they're using Mel Gibson quotes. Yeah, and then there's the car chase. He has the car with the flames uh, and like the big engine coming out from the front. And see, see, that's overkill. You know, again, you the first movie. You know, he had that car because he was showing up to a big party. You know, the dog wears the mask, but it was still the same dog. You know, like here, it's like it was such. Uh, I, I, everything was overkill. Yeah, they went too much, and then and then he's like following him, and then they end up at a, in like a big uh, boxing arena. <laughs> like, what the hell was going on? And where did that come from? I have no idea. Is it just <laughs> that's what I understand sometimes with these movies? Was that something that was already set up? And the only part that I thought was really cool, and I have the movie on right now, so I went to the part just to make sure I remembered it right. Was when he had the 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 only time the graphics actually looked. Uh, that I enjoyed was when Loki was like a pencil, which is kind of corny. He turned to a Ticonderoga number two pencil. And then he just was drawing things and he drew like a rake for Jamie Kennedy to fall on. And then he says to him like, Hey, this is a waste of time. We are, you wear equal adversaries. So Loki and the mask, why would he make a mask that is powerful as he is? That makes no sense. But okay. So, but at the same time, why does he have to turn do, do, do a, turn into a pencil? Like I know he has the magic powers that. So you know he he, he does all this crazy stuff. He could change into anybody, but in order to do something else, he has to turn into a pencil. Like, again, that didn't make sense either. Like it's almost like his powers are strong at sometimes, but sometimes he has to like manipulate whatever powers he has. Like oh t- totally. And the fight scene was actually it could have been cool. Like yes. I was like you know what. This could have been really cool, a nice boxing fight. It would have been funny if they, like, maybe rip, ripped on Rocky, like, done some of those, like, I don't know, like, the same kind of sequences, maybe, like, the big, you know, the spit coming out of the mouth from the punches. But, no, it ends with, like, a fart in the face. Like, but, And 
you know what? I, again, doesn't this remind you a little bit about Bugs Bunny? You know, oh, totally. The pencil. The, the, I don't remember seeing a cartoon oh, yeah, of yeah, Bugs yeah. Bunny where the artist. Yeah, like you race them. Yeah, yes. like you race some bugs. Yeah. So I wonder if there's any kind of like Looney Tunes. I think maybe the guy, maybe the writer was obsessed with it, but there's no like, like Mel Blanc or none of those people are really associated with it. So, because okay. there's so much <laughs> Looney Tunes in this movie that I, you know, uh, even the look of it, like look, like the, even the town, the look of the town could have been a place where Bugs Bunny lived. Oh, like, totally. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I really, I'd be curious. I'm going to do some research and see if there's any kind of correlation. Yeah. This movie and, and the Looney Tunes. Yeah, definitely. So, so, yeah. so then we get to the, the climax of the movie. They're going to be like, hey, we're going to let the kid decide. Like, I, I love my kid. I'm not going to let him decide. Like, why would I even put myself in that position? Like, what if my kid chose, you know, the fun Loki guy versus the dad that really didn't care about him? <laughs> the one that gave, you mean the one that gave him a lamp with, like, glass shards? Yes, yes, like, yes. That's, that's yes. So, so you're leaving it up to a two-year-old. Oh, I know. And then when he's sitting in the middle, he's going back and forth. He's looking at Jamie Kennedy in the mask. Which he looks so freakish, and then he's going back to Loki, and then Loki, like it's funny that you say it's like a Tim Burton world, like the city, because he totally ripped off Beetlejuice. He looked just like the carousel in Beetlejuice. At yep, the end. yep. Like the exact, it looked exactly the same. It's like they took that playbook and took that. So then, obviously, you have to have the heartfelt moment. He takes the mask off, and then the kid's like, "Oh, I choose you, Dad." Yeah. Meanwhile, though, in, in, in reality, I think Loki was a better father to the kid oh, for, the, for, totally. the, for the ten minutes that he had him than, than Jamie Kenny ever was. Yeah, and then and then Loki is going crazy, and you're like, oh my god, he's going to kill him. He has a big hammer. And how the hell is G- that's again another thing with the god thing? So he's a god. He's strong. He can do whatever he wants. He gets suck up a woman into a <laughs> vacuum cleaner, but he has a super like large hammer. And he's not able to kill them. Jamie Kennedy actually can hold up the hammer. <laughs> and then the hammer has drill bits that come out from the side of it. So then the very end of the movie, he, he gets saved by the bell. The timer goes off. So it, you know, it, Odin calls him home. It, do, it, doesn't, it, it just doesn't make sense. Again, he's a god who could probably instantly snap his fingers and break his neck. But he has to bring all these huge w- hammer, vac- all that stuff. Like, why? Like, I mean, like, and again, honestly, that adds to the stupidity of the movie. It's like, you know, they, I think, again, they're like, this movie stinks. We have no right. So let's just get, let's try to do some silly special effects to try to grab some kind of attention. Oh, I know. You know? And then Odin gets the mask back, and then... Didn't Beetlejuice have a big hammer? Yes, he did. He had the two big hammers when he <laughs> came out from, yeah. So then at the very end, you know, he tries to make Odin feel, take his son back, and he... so. The end of the movie, the, the end of the mask is given back. And then, obviously, from everything we just saw, they used that as the TV show to get Stephen Wright, <laughs> right? <laughs> like even more famous. So they had the baby <laughs> crawling around. They have all that going. So it's just, it, yeah. It, so that's why, obviously, we we're so stoked that that movie was over. So before we go into how we think, because I, I think we both have pretty good thoughts on how we could have like saved this movie. Yep. Here's a few things. So you know the Razzie Awards. You know yeah. that. The, how, how the they break movies. down like yeah 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 so worst movies from that year it was up for worst picture and it was up for worst sequel or remake it won for sequel or remake it beat out bewitched deuce bigelow european gigolo dukes of hazard house of wax and then for the worst picture it beat out pretty much all it, no it actually lost to dirty love that dirty. was a Je- the jenny mccarthy movie oh man well, first yeah. of all, I didn't even know there was a sequel to uh, some of those movies you mentioned. Uh, yeah, well, some of them were remakes. So Deuce that's Hazard, Deuce of Hazard had two two movies. No, no, it's just I guess they call it a remake from okay. even like okay. a TV gotcha. show. Gotcha. But yeah, that's pretty much the only. It was up for a lot of awards, but that was like oh. the only one that it won. So let's dive in on how we would be able to fix the movie. The first thing that I have to offer to this would be what we mentioned at the beginning: a better movie. Like, obviously, it wouldn't, in my eyes, Son of the Mask was a dumb way to go. The only way it would work, Son of the Mask, is you have Jim Carrey, either it be now, and he has a son that's 11 years old that finds the mask. Brings it to school somehow or becomes yeah. like cool. Yeah, that, but to be honest with you, if this, okay, look, if, if Jim Carrey was given the same script, the same movie, 
I still think the movie would be trash. Like, I don't think. Oh, totally. I, I, yeah, I don't no. think Jim Carrey. I, I, I love Jim Carrey. It, but t- if, you ju- if you're just going to swap the actor for the actor, it might have raised the bar a little bit. But the movie was so bad to begin with. Like, the, it just it wouldn't have fit. So I. But I think it, I, I got to assume this is not the script that was given to Jim Carrey. I would assume that he was given a different script and Jamie K- Kennedy couldn't do the Jim Carrey stuff. Oh, totally. So yeah. they had, you know what I'm saying? Um, I also think that 10 years is way too long. You know, you're, you, I think a lot of people forgot about the first movie. You know, yeah. they weren't a huge fan of Jim Carrey. So, you know, that's I, they're not going to put two and two together. Um, so I think 10 years would be way too long. Yeah, or if you're going to do it, 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 have it be the mass two, and then if you do have all the money in the world to throw at Jim Carrey, do yeah. like a lot. What a lot of these movies are, they're kind of like the regurgitated of the first one with like just a different story plot. Yeah. You know, they could have got uh, uh, what's her name, the girl that was in it, the original. Cameron Diaz. Yeah, they could have got Cameron Diaz probably back in it. Like you never know, but no, I totally agree with that. But again, even a better sequel. Again, you have Jim Carrey be in it for a little, little bit you know, 11 years later, even if it was a few years later and you have the buddy in the movie. So when he dives in, he gets the mask. Yep. Have the movie like start from right there. Yeah. Like that buddy was great in that movie. He was all about like hitting on chicks at the bank. He was like oogling uh, <laughs> all over Cameron Diaz when she came into the bank that day. And it's just like, that would have been such a better movie. hundred percent. And you know, or I mean, honestly, well, first of all, like, you know, I don't even know what audience this movie's for because, you know, the first movie is for adults, you know, and they loved it. This movie, I don't know if it's, is it a kid's movie? You know, is, is it, it, because if they wanted to make this a better movie, I think, and they wanted to direct towards kids, then I would have honestly focused most of the movie on just the kid and the dog, the whole movie. Forget oh, Jimmy totally. Kennedy and let, you know, like let it run out as these, these two trying to live together, almost like, you know, the secret life of pets, but like have them, this is their story. The movie would have been better. You know, oh, definitely, yeah. Focusing. You said to pick one or the other. You can't have one movie like focus like, okay, this is gonna be a kids movie. All right, no, this is gonna be more about the adults. There has right. to be one, you know, like the movie. It, they're so corny, but those baby geniuses movies yeah. that came out around this t- same time, they were terrible too. But at least they were one thing. The and only directed towards kids. Oh, totally. Right. And I think the only way this movie could have worked, and, I, and this is God honest truth. I don't know how the budget was that much, but it should have been more like if you're going to do it 11 years later, it should have been either like a cartoon or just do like a like it could have been like an ABC family kind of movie, like 45 minutes long, like nothing too much because you're going to cut this movie down. If you cut down the times that he had the mask on and you just focus on the kid and his powers, it would have been like a solid 45 minutes and it would have been like watchable. And the, and the and the look of the movie was like an ABC family movie. Oh, totally. So you know they were, they probably could have saved a lot more money doing it that way. Yeah, and yeah. I, uh, I agree, hundred percent. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I I really st- I still think it's it's definitely hard to do much with this movie. It, it really was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh, totally. And you know, so yeah. I mean, I I, there, I don't think there's really much you could have done. Uh, no, I know. I think a little tweaks here and there, but I mean, it's just bad. Yeah, like you said, you said it best. Like even if June Carrey was in here, even if they did have Cameron Diaz back and playing, maybe they were together. And say if you just did the same exact movie, it, it was just like all in all, just like a huge cl- clusterfuck of failure. So I think no matter what could have been done, like there's nothing that could have saved this movie. All right, great. So that was Son of the Mask. Uh, it was just as terrible as we talked about. So. Jamie, would you? I know you said you would turn it off pretty early, but would you even s- tell anybody, "Hey, watch this movie just for fun"? <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, and, and I and I watched this with both my kids. My my son's eighteen, my daughter's fifteen, and my son was too busy on his phone; he couldn't care less about it. So he he got bored real quick. My daughter, every stupid scene, kept looking at me. So even I, as we said before, is this made for kids? It's not made for kids because my daughter hated it as much as I did. So I would not want to put anyone through this movie, and I would say absolutely never watch it. Yeah, totally. Some of these movies, uh, bad movies that we've seen in the past, like bad sequels uh, that we're going to be covering, at least you'll want to be like, hey, you know what? There's some good parts to it. Exactly. Really, boil it down. The only time I laugh is when when Loki turned the neighbor into a giant nose <laughs> and when Bob Hoskins was in Jerry Minor jumping around in the in the shop. That was, those are like the only two parts I actually really laughed. But the rest of the movie was just, it was just horrible. And, it, 
And Wasn't about, film good? And think about it. The, the two times you laughed had nothing to do with the main characters. Oh, I know. Uh, I mean, like, uh, Jamie Kennedy. Like, Loki, I, I, I actually laughed at some of his costumes, like what he was talking about. Oh, yeah. Like, right. No, he was so great. He, to me, he was the best part of the movie, which is not saying a lot. But yeah, him and Hobbs, to me, that's like that was the movie. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Absolutely not. All right. I wonder if the people that, uh, you know, the folks at Marvel watch this movie and they're like, you know what? Maybe a Thor movie could work nowadays. We already have the we already have them talking about it, but uh, okay, great. So first episode done. Hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun doing it. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Sequels Only. Of course, subscribe. I promise, going forward, our audio is going to be so much better. We found a different way to do it. And tune into next week's episode. It's our first Q and A with Doug. I sit down and uh, talk with actor, director, comedian uh, Jerry Miner. He had a small role in Son of the Mask, which was pretty funny. And uh, he had some great stories on how he broke into the scene. He started on Mr. Show with Bob and David during season four of that show. And then he's been on so many countless shows that are so funny. Uh, he was a writer and performer on SNL. So he tells a story right off the bat about that. And most people remember him from Lucky Louie. He was a neighbor on HBO's uh, Louis C.K. project uh, back in 2007. So he was a neighbor down the hall. And... That show was so great, and he was great in it. Yeah, and currently he's on Those Who Can't, which is on True TV. It's on Monday nights, a show about teachers. So, yeah, check him out, and make sure you listen next week because it's a great conversation, uh, and he was, he was just great to talk to. All right, thanks again for listening. Bye.